Hey guys, it's Julie with Julie Designs. This is going to be the first video in a series that I'm gonna to try to do every week where I take stuff I find at the thrift store, garage sale, stuff people give to me, and turn it into my style, which is usually like farmhouse, antique, vintage, French country. I don't know what my style is, I just know what I like. And this is what I spend pretty much all day, every day doing. I just don't film at all. So I'm gonna pick four items and film actually film what i do to them just to give y'all some inspiration and ideas in case y'all come across this stuff and then you'll know how to flip it and turn it into your style as well so if you like that kind of stuff go ahead and subscribe to my channel and if you've already subscribed to my channel and you've been wondering where i've been for the past five or six months well probably the same thing as you everything shut down around here around middle of march and all of a sudden my husband was home four kids were home and all my free time was spent cooking and cleaning something had to give so i continued to work a little bit but i just stopped filming i just didn't have the time and it was always like loud and chaotic at my house but things are slowly going back to normal i hope they are for y'all too so I'm gonna get back to doing this. So today I picked out these four projects to film this week. These are, I believe there are some old like frying pans where like when you fry some, you put it in the grease and it has a little handle that's missing. But I'm gonna paint these white and put some little feet on them and they're gonna be the cutest little plant holders. They're gonna be very like vintage farmhouse, very cute. I always pick up these glass cloches when I find them and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a base for them out of cypress. Cypress is a very popular wood around here and that's going to be a super cute, easy project. I paid I think a dollar or two for these and I'll sell them for $14. I don't know what I'm going to sell this one for. I'll figure it out. It's probably like, let's say around $14 for that. Y'all. These are gonna be a great money maker. I paid $15 for the set of these huge candle holders. This one's so big, you can't even see the whole thing in the camera. So the plan is to paint these white, distress them slightly, and then I'm gonna cut out a cypress wooden top to put on them, and that way it could be a riser or a candle holder. But I am just loving the two-tone look of white with natural wood. So that's the plan. Oh, I'm so excited about these. They're going to be so, so cute. And like I said, I paid $15 for those. And I'll probably sell the set for at least around $40, if not more. We'll see. I should think about pricing before I start this video, but sometimes I wait until the project's finished and how long it see how long it takes me to actually create it, and that kind of helps me um, price it out as well. Okay, the last project is going to be this cute little trunk that I found. Now it looks like somebody tried to paint it already. It has like a really bad paint job. It needs to be cleaned up. Now chalk paint does stick to everything, but you at least want to clean the piece. Like you don't want any grease and stuff on there. So the plan is I'm going to, I think paint like some pink and some blue under it and then spray the whole thing white and then distress it so that pink and that blue and some of this color comes out. And I'm just thinking it's gonna be so cute in a little girl's room. That's my envision for it. And when I sell it, I'll tell them if they want me to write like a name on it, that would be so cute right here. So I'm definitely thinking little girl's room for that piece. So I'm so excited. Let's go ahead and get started on these projects. Project number one is the glass top cloches. I found a circle that I thought would be the right size to fit with the glass top. I'm using a nice thick piece of cypress and cutting it out with my jigsaw very carefully and slowly following the line. To even out the edges and get it as round as possible, I'm going to sand it down. This is a sander my husband bought for me and it works really well. Next, I'm going to make sure that the bases are even so it fits flat. I'm using a tool called a planer 
It also sands it down and really makes the grain show. I decided to add a base to one of the bottoms. I am just cutting some pieces from a crib run spindle that I had. I'm going to glue the little feet down in a triangle pattern. I'm going to let the glue dry for a few minutes so it doesn't move and then I'm going to go ahead and nail it in to make sure it's secure. And then I'm going to seal the wood with butcher block oil, cutting oil. This will make it food safe and it really, really makes the grain pop and makes the piece look absolutely beautiful. Project number two is the tall candlesticks. I started by spraying them all with white chalk paint. I always keep white chalk paint in my paint sprayer. This just makes everything go so much quicker and easier. I love my paint sprayer. Then I lightly distressed them. I did not use my Oribo sander because I didn't want to over distress them. So I am hand distressing them. I just want to bring out all the details but not overly distress it. I cut out wood circles just like I had done for the glass cloches, but I want the wood on these candlesticks to look much more antiques and older and darker brown. So I'm just using, it's watered down brown paint, but I think it gives it a nice matte antique look to the wood. I use this a lot. Then I, to attach the wood tops to the candlesticks, I don't know why I showed y'all the glue because you can't see it, but it is Gorilla Glue. And I'm putting it all around the edges and you want to let this set overnight and then it is good to go. Project number three is going to be this cute little scallop edge chest. I'm using Waverly chalk paint from Walmart in pink and a pretty blue color. And I'm just randomly putting it around the chest, trying not to think about it too much. The plan is to paint it white with the sprayer and then distress it and hopefully this blue and pink color will come through. I've actually never done this before. But I've seen it done and I have confidence that I can make it happen. I wanted to give y'all a tip real quick. So you remember they had this um, stuff on the chest and even though I cleaned it after I sprayed it, I'm spraying it with my sprayer and it dried, it's still coming through. That's called bleed through when you have something on the wood or the piece that you're painting and then it comes through the paint after you've painted it. Okay, so to fix this issue, what I use is spray sealer. I like Rust-Oleum. Um, Rust-Oleum is my favorite brand of spray paint, so that's pretty much all I use. You're gonna spray over the spots that are coming through, let it dry, and paint it again, and then that way the, those areas won't come through again. So I haven't, I sprayed the Rust-Oleum on and I haven't resprayed it yet, but once I respray it, you won't see none of these streaks anymore. Once it was all painted and dry, I used my orbital sander to distress it. I use my orbital sander a lot to distress my pieces. It just makes it so quick and easy. And y'all, I was so excited when I started distressing this piece. It was coming out exactly like I imagined. 
and then I took a wet rag and wet distressed it and I find using this after my orbital sander just makes the distressing look very natural and realistic like it's been aged forever. Project number four is the little round fryer baskets. I use some little spindles I had laying around and I pre-drilled a hole in them. This keeps the wood from splitting. And then since the basket already has holes in it, I'm gonna drill a hole through the basket, put a screw through the basket and into the leg. And I'm, this one's gonna have three legs. And then I thought the legs were moving a little bit too much, so that Gorilla Glue that I used before, I'm going to add it on each of the legs, tighten it up, and let it sit overnight. And then I'm going to spray the entire piece white. Once the, everything has dried, I'm going to distress it. The same technique I used before, a little bit of sandpaper, a little bit of wet distressing to get the perfect look. So one basket I put taller legs and the other basket I put a little bit shorter legs and they came out so cute. I love, love, love how these came out. This is just four of the projects that I worked on this week. I hope y'all enjoyed this video and please comment below which project was your favorite.